control of this. Are you lazy? No, I'm not lazy. What the hell do I do? You're standing behind the bar, dumping your beer down a drain, right? And Chase is across the street, sticking it up your ass. Uptown New Orleans, located just six miles from world famous Bourbon Street, and home to two universities, Tulane and Loyola. 22% of the area's population are college students, and 6,800 of them are 21 and over. In the heart of it all lies TJ Quills. So there's our owner, Darian. Okay. And I understand a lot of the people that work here are his buddies. So these guys have been partying together for years. There is Russell, bar manager. Wow. And then there's Spellman. He's one of our bartenders. So we gotta find out what's going on here. Is this guy Darian controlling this place? Are they controlling him? Does he even act like an owner? Sounds to me like Darian doesn't know what the hell he's doing. You know me, Elaine. I've had this place under surveillance for three days. This is what's going on in this place. Look at these guys with their shirts off. Look at this. Wow. That's sad and pathetic. The next five days is going to be a hell of a grow up exercise for them. You know what else is interesting? This place has a terrible reputation of serving minors. So we have to draw a good college student to this place, and we have to draw women. So I got six sorority sisters. And this is the dream demographic for this place. But I gave one of them a fake ID. Now, she is 21, and she does have her real ID with her. But I want to see if the doorman picks up the fake ID. OK, so there's our girl. Thank you. You're welcome. There it goes. The fake ID just went in. Do you know what he's doing? He looks at it, but he's not reading it. Oh. He has no idea what name it says on that license or anything. The guy who looked at my ID looks like he just didn't really know what he was looking for, but he ends it up giving me a wristband anyway. What's up, ladies? Hey. Do you guys have a, a menu? Yeah. Like a bar menu? Like food? So I didn't even have dinner. My research shows that when guests eat something in a bar, they'll stay 52 minutes longer. Without that food, the bar becomes a filling station not a hangout. <laughs> smoking? <laughs> you know, smoking is legal here. But you know what's interesting is only about 23% of college students smoke. Really? So the fact is about 75% of the people that come in here really don't like it. You go home, you smell, you stink. Will you take a shot with us? Yeah, absolutely. I told these girls to behave badly tonight so I could see how the bartenders handle it. She just drank from it, so that's it. That's it, done. You now have a fake ID through the front door, past the bartender, and she's drinking. And where the hell's our owner? I've been drinking since like four. So bored right now? So easy to get them to drink. All we had to do was ask for shots and smile at them. Bam, bam, shots. Taking another shot. I can't believe what I'm watching. Within 20 minutes, this bartender had four shots and it's only 9.30. Isn't just irresponsible. They could lose their liquor license or get sued by a customer. Well, that Spillman comes in with a sleeveless shirt. What a jerk that guy is. But I gotta tell you, this bar sucks. I mean, look at it. Right now, it's not a college bar, and all the guys seem to be, you know, the creepy guy. To the right behind us, there's this like really creepy guy just staring. Probably going somewhere with food. I'm not sure. After getting creeped out by the guys inside the bar, John sorority girls head out front, where they're followed by bartender Spellman, whoa, whoa, whoa. who attempts to persuade them with his go-to charm. There's nothing female friendly about this bar at all. I mean, it's like the anti. They could do no better than the six girls we sent in. That guy Spellman chased them out. For a bar to be successful, people have to stay for a few hours, particularly females. This bar is a problem keeping them a half hour. So you bought this place how long ago? Six months ago. Now, how did you buy it? Did you get a bank loan or? Yeah. I bought $350,000. So are you losing money now? Yes. How much? About $4,000, $5,000 a month. 
how are you covering those losses? I've actually had to borrow money from my mom, um, about $20,000. If this so fails, this is a real embarrassment. So what's your mother going to say? I don't even know. I mean, obviously, she's going to be disappointed in me. It's one thing to borrow money from your family and work hard to pay it back. It's another thing to borrow money from your family, get drunk every night, rip your shirt off, and have no ability to ever pay it back. I sent six girls in here tonight. One of those girls came in with this driver's license. Does this look real to you? Then the same girls go up to the bar there. He doesn't check their ID, and he starts serving them all shots. It's irresponsible. That's a fake ID, and you know it. You, know you guys know. look it. My guys don't let any do it. You know this came through the front door of your bar. And never guys, so you look at Hold on. license made it through the door, you guys let it happen, and then you served them, and then you had four shots with them in 20 minutes. This is as fake as fake can be. Look at this. That's why we have the reputation we have. So how about an apology? Sorry. 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 Here it is. Rocky Point Cantina. Guys, we're in Tempe, Arizona, home of Arizona State University. So we got a rich market and an empty bar. Now they're in about a million and a half. Oh, gosh. And they feature heavy metal bands. Look at that. Wow. Nice pit. So, guys, I wanted to get three girls mm -hmm. to come in. The average age of an Arizona State University student is 22. Oh. These girls are our target audience. Hi, ladies. How are you? Hi. Just need to see your IDs. <laughs> Sit at the bar. Seats are empty. Nobody comes around for a good 10 minutes. I need a shot. We had to make our way over to another bar. Put the crowd here. If you watch Jason, every minute the kid seems to find something to do. It's cleaning toilets, stocking bars, cooking. Where's Scott? I'm gonna get a shirt. It says, if you can find Scott, you get a free drink. Scott, Mr. Big Shot, who sits on his ass in the office. Boy, does that piss me off, guys. Is this the only menu you guys have? Yeah. Medium yeah. Can I just get a quick pan, quesadilla? You have a special drink or anything like that? The Rocky Point. It's really good. Okay, I'll try that. That's fine. Like that? Six bucks, honey. Six bucks. Honey. Six bucks. Honey. Honey. Six bucks. 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 Look at that kitchen, Tiffany. Mm. Look at the filth Gosh. over there. Look at that grill. You know, guys, we can't do anything till that place is clean. Yeah. So that's Jason cooking. What is that? Mystery meat? That's disgusting. They're gonna serve that to somebody. I don't know if it's chicken, I don't know what it is. It almost doesn't matter what the hell they're cooking. The place right. is so yeah. disgusting. Hot wings, girls. Hot wings and quesadilla. Yeah. Chicken. I don't know if that's chicken or beef, swear to God, these are used last week. I'm in the bathroom, so I have to go to the bathroom, so I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom, so I have to go to the bathroom. I am like a back alley bar. So I'm in the restroom, and I don't even know if I can go, because there's stuff all over the seat. What is this? Is this throw up? Is this alcohol? Is this pee? That's the most disgusting sound there. Length of stay is about a great experience. The bathrooms have to be fresh. We attract women and we keep them. That defines a great experience, and that increases profits. We couldn't hear anything. We couldn't have a conversation. So we just kind of stood there. I can't hear my thoughts. How long have you been bartending, man? Three years. Did you ever bartend anywhere else? Uh, Vegas. Vegas. Best bartender in the world. Oh, yeah? When's the last time that you got on your hands and knees and actually cleaned up some of this crap that's lying around here? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Is that two weeks right there? Yeah. That might not be two weeks. Yeah, well, that that's not going to be two weeks. You guys all drinking beer out of this cooler? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Never have I ever 
seen this crap. I need you in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. I need you. Oh. These are pool noodles. They're using these to soak up all the mold and the rust and the bacteria on the bottom of their beer coolers. That's disgusting. Obviously, an unbelievably powerful marketplace. University of Michigan. There it is, the arena. Mm -hmm. okay. Look at that, a prime corner location. And what's interesting is look at the other bars in the middle of the block. They're busy, but yet the arena with this high profile corner location is empty. You guys said lemons, right? That fruit gives you the hangover, man. You gotta watch it. Sam. You've never had a shot on fire? I can light some booze on fire. You trust me? It's good to have a shot tender. Trust me. You spill the drink and now your bar's on fire. <laughs> Blow it out with your mouth and then drink it with a straw because the rim's gonna be real hot. So they just lit the whole thing on fire and they're giving it right to the customers without anybody blowing it out. Unbelievable. Would you ever serve a flaming drink to a customer? Never. I'm excited about anything. I can light on fire, to be honest with you. Firework. <laughs> Tonight for Recon, I got some University of Michigan grad students. They not only know University of Michigan, they know downtown Ann Arbor. And I'm hoping they can shed some light on how the hell Mike got in debt a million dollars. This will be my sixth year as a student here at the University of Michigan, and I've never been to the arena because I've never heard anyone really talk about it. I hear some menus for you. Oh, thanks. Do you have any okay. specials tonight or anything? Um, no, not really. We're just going to get some appetizers. One order of the nachos uh, with beef. OK. And then we're also going to do one order of those steak bites. OK. Great. Can I get a Long Island? Long Island? Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, rum punch for me. Rum punch. Yeah. I can't do a rum punch because we don't have simple syrup. Um, Let's do, let's do Rum Runner. Rum Runner? Yeah, okay. I'll do that. Okay, yeah. all right, I can do that. Wow, a bar like this should have simple syrup. So that's a red flag right there. Yeah. What's in a Rum Runner? Uh, I don't know, I can Google it and see if we have all the ingredients. Let me Google it in a second. She's actually trying to look up the drink recipe on her phone. So we right. must never have made a Rum Runner because I've, the, right. it had three different ways to make it, each one called with blackberry brandy. We have to start Googling things behind the bar. It just shows that there's not a lot of training on what they know for drinks. Long Island. Tequila Sunrise. It's really sour. How's yours? Yeah, a little sour as well. Hey, did one of you guys get a rum runner? Yeah, I did. So you gotta pick a different drink. Okay, um, let's just do a gin and tonic. It seems like they're catering more to just beer. beer. Yeah, there's so many better places that we could go for these. Um, uh, not happy with the sandwich. There's Vinny. Vinny's the actual manager. Get out of my window, old man! Mike presents himself as menacing, not inviting. He's not that approachable. No, there's no way that that's the guy I'm going to to ask for help when I need help. Are we still doing the fresh green beans? I gotta take a look at them. They may have lost their life. That's Jimmy. He's your cook. Not a look of confidence, I see. Yeah, I haven't seen beef tips in 18 and 19 years. It's dated. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, nachos? Yeah, you can just, uh, you just share, yeah. share everything? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. That's a stick. It's a little rare. It's a little rare. I'm going to flag her down. See if she can cook the meat a little more. Can I see something? Yeah, um, these are a little undercooked, or they're just kind of all over the place, so they could, you could just cook a little longer. It's actually pretty chewy, too. Uh, I mean, it, it's culinary 101. When you're cooking really simple bites, you got to knock it out of the park. Steak bites are a little all over the place, they're saying. They want a, they want a new one? Yeah, that's so we can fly that. All right. Great, thanks, Jimmy. What are the steak bites? Uh, a little undercooked. Uh, yeah, they just weren't really together in terms of temp, temp wise, but. And we wanted meat meals. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well. Something was tweaking me out. Felt like I kind of got grilled. He gave me the stare of death. Look at this freaking guy. He looks angry all the time. So, what was up with the steak bites? Not evenly cooked. I'm making him a new one. That's. Need a side of uh, stay home. And I'm gonna snap. Drop it off. I'll take it off. Oh, no. Here. Want 
give him a couple seconds to choke on their steak bites. See if they loved it. Every time he walks away from a table, a person, he's got yeah. something to say that degrades either the customer, the employee, or everything is beneath him. This guy is just a dick. Sorry, sorry, honey, daddy's a dick. So it's really like a different steak bites. <laughs> yeah. These suck. The other ones are fine, they just were not cooked right now. Mike, your veins are starting to pop out. I want to hear how spectacular they were. Um, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but these are undercooked too. So, um, I'm sorry. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Kiss my ass, dude. Look at this. He's got a line to say about everything, but he's the one who's failing. That's why I cut my hair, so I don't pull it out. Didn't like these. They don't want any more. Or I'm not giving them any more or something. This guy attitude is killing his business. I think we got more food in the trash than we actually sold today. It's not very nice, Mike. Would you want to work for this guy? No, he looks like he's there to intimidate everyone around him. Shut up. So what I did, guys, is I wanted to come out of the gate with a mini stress test. It's a Wednesday night. The college crawl normally happens on Thursday night. I juggled the crawl and made them come a night early. Let's see if we can tell exactly why one of the few bars in a college town is actually failing. What the hell? Where did you guys all come from? A bowling alley? It's over you there better get behind the bar, there. bud. That's great, yeah. Put the beer away and get behind the bar. Sonoma State is a mile and a half down the road. And that shuttle bus is just sitting there, unused in the back. There's a huge missed opportunity. <laughs> What do you guys, what do you guys like? Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Nice pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did anybody even get a drink yet? Well, you want to keep it open for you? Close it out? Can't run cards. Yeah. All right, then tell them cash only. Cash only, guys! So what he should be doing is taking credit cards and opening tabs. So when he said cash only, if you're in this bar and you don't have cash, you're gonna leave. Yeah. yeah. And how many college kids walk around with a ton of cash? Um, energy drink I know I need on my side. Oh, okay, I think we might be out of that, so. All right. I have no cold corona on my side. So the POS system is down. They're running out of things behind the bar. Right. So that tells me the bar hasn't been stocked. Right. Do you guys have like a cocktail menu or something I can get? Fortunately, I do not have a cocktail menu. Okay, do you want to see like a shooter or a shot or something? CPRs, those are really good shots. Crown. Peach stop. I'll get a CPR. A CPR is what you ordered. Strong, disgusting. Oh. Look at the beer going down the drain. Oh man, it's 40, 50 percent of the beer. You have a towel, Chase. Let me see your towel. You still going? If that was your draft beer system, would you pull a second beer? Would you say 86 draft beer? We can't serve that. Yeah. That's flat, it was warm. Shocky. Just put ice in the thing. They poured half the keg down the drain there. I haven't seen one bit of food go out. Do you have a beer menu? I have popcorn at the moment. That's the free food that they're giving out. What produces a revenue? Here. Here. I gotta step outside with Luger Sound. I'm waving right now. I'm going, over. I'm going across the street. Like, you guys gotta handle this now. I use a Madhouse backdrop for out of a lot of our products. Our beers are pouring half the foam. We can't even get through it. It's a nightmare right now. I gotta take off. This is bull. Right now he's walking away like a he's loser. He's leaving. <laughs> yeah. Where's he going? I had to get out of there. I need a shot. <laughs> he went across the street and his bar's packed. You did every bar owner's dream. You packed their place on a Wednesday night, and it's a disaster within 10 minutes. Hey, why can't you just stay at our bar? Every night, he has to go somewhere else. Why don't you go back over there and do it? Eric, you get him over there. I'm not going to deal with this. I'm going to go home. I think I'm just going to grab my sweatshirt and go. What are you go doing? Inside, go inside. Hey, if you need me, come get me. This is freaking absurd. Instead of tending to their fully packed bar, these owners are running all over the place to try to convince their own bar manager to come to work. 
I'm going in. A little calamity tonight, huh? You, you could call it that, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, who's supposed to be running this car? Chase is supposed to be doing the day-to-day -day managerial operations. And you own 40%, right? Correct. Dan owns 40%. Right. And Chase owns 20%. Right. So you guys put up the money? Three and a grand. How much money did Chase put up? He didn't put in a dime. He's going to earn his way into it. How has he earned his way so far? It's miserable. So if it's you call him, he won't pick up the phone? No. Do you know where he went? He went to our competition. He needs guidance. He needs uh, direction. And me and him are like a father's son, and I need someone to get to him and explain that this is not a charity business. Take control of this. Are you lazy? Now, I'm not lazy. What the hell do I do? You're standing behind the bar, dumping your beer down a drain, right? And Chase is across the street, sticking it up your ass. If you take control of this, I'll fix it. But if you don't take control of it, he's screwed. Can you commit to him that you yes, will? Yes, I am. Well, then get your freaking stepson in line and turn this into a business, and I'll teach you how to make money and make him do something about it. Don't lose your house and stand there and say nothing. That makes you as big an idiot as him. Go talk to your son. Turn this into something I can work with, Dan. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.